We want to extend a, a warm welcome to everybody to our our burn building groundbreaking ceremony. We thank all for being here, uh, all for taking the time to support us in the Baltimore City Fire Department. And we give a special thanks to Mayor Stephanie Rawlins Blake for her support as well. Uh, I want to make sure that um, I also give a special thanks to uh, the men and women at the, the Fire Academy. Uh, majority of our uh, staff members here, or all of them actually, have worked very hard uh, in support of this uh, building, uh, especially uh, Chief Moore, as well as uh, one of our Baltimore City Fire Department members who are not here, uh, Director Eckert. She's not here as well today, and we want to make sure that we give her a thanks also. The mayor will make the uh, formal acknowledgments, but I, uh, I just want to make sure that um, we don't uh, miss anyone in our staff. Uh, we thank uh, Acting Assistant Chief Wagner, uh, Shift Commander uh, Canna, as well as uh, Deputy Chief Perricone, as well as um, uh, Chief of Staff, uh, Mr. Nunning. It was here uh, since 1955, the uh, burn building directly behind me, um, that most of the fire department, and especially all the fire department members here today, uh, all of us for the most part trained in this building directly behind us. Um, myself as well. Um, I have many uh, memories of the building behind us. Uh, I can recall, and it just so happened that the uh, building, the burn building, was my assignment when I was in the fire academy. And uh, for all those who went through the fire academy, you know that we had certain cleaning assignments here. Some of us cleaned the tower, some of us took care of the other buildings on the property. But uh, myself and uh, uh, three other members had this building. And, and uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the members who was with me, his name is Alan Roberts, who uh, lost his life in the line of duty. Um, he, he, he too was here in this building with me cleaning it. And uh, I can actually remember the metal doors. I can remember the, the metal, metal stairways. I can remember where some of the cinder blocks were. And um, just to say that this building was so instrumental to our training. And now, very soon, we'll be able to have a new building here. And once again, we'll be able to train men and women uh, who want to join the fire department. And in my opinion, and in my observation, the greatest fire department in this country. What I want to do, and I think it's appropriate because um, Chief Moore was a, a instrumental uh, piece here as far as the uh, planning, uh, the commitment to the, uh, the burn build. And I want to make sure that uh, he explains a couple things to us and how we got here, uh, the future of the building, because we plan to have a good relationship with a training relationship with bg and &E, for example and uh, all of our other regional partners. But uh, Chief Moore, uh, I will ask that you come up and, and tell us some other plans that you have for the future for this training building. Chief Moore, please. Hey, thank you. I'm gonna start off just by smiling and looking at the Fire Academy staff and say, I told you so. I knew that there were a lot of people that were working hard to make this happen and now it's coming to fruition. So the center of every fire department is a training academy. I always say if you want to see how healthy a fire department is, you know, take a look at the training academy. It's the heart of every fire service organization. That's where careers start, and it's also where uh, career-long learning uh, should take place. It's here at the Baltimore City Fire Academy where a lot of our training for our special operations teams has occurred. Uh, once this training is complete, we'll have on-duty personnel ready to respond to dive and technical-related rescue incidents 24-7 from our Locust Point Station and our Stedman Station downtown. This is an unprecedented level of service to the city and it's also in direct support of the mayor's initiative to make our city safer. Also it's here where we've taken charge of providing the training for our newly implemented promotional requirements uh, which will help our department improve also. Both of these are historic initiatives for the department and part of maintaining progressiveness and improving the fire service as a whole. So when I took over the fire academy about two years ago, there was one thing that was very obvious and that, and that was that we needed to focus on its infrastructure. A lot of good work had been done in the main buildings, but the training areas needed and still needs a lot of attention. Fortunately, the discussion of a new burn building had already begun. 
And we also had a conceptual drawing of the Fire Academy campus done by Ms. Laurie Ansley uh, from the Department of General Services. The drawing was a master plan of what the Academy could look like when it's completed in phases, uh, with phase one being the burn building. After about a month of being here, the staff and I met with Laurie, our logistics director, Virginia Eckert, Paulie Meads and Jessica and his team from Paulie Meads and Stromdal, and we began designing the burn building. There are three things that we focused on and wanted to get out of the building. One is that we wanted it to look like the buildings that we fight fire in the city, and thank you for accepting us on that, Paul. <laughs> the second is that we wanted to incorporate as many areas of training as we could. Why? Because a better trained firefighter is a safety, safer firefighter and also a healthier department. The second is we wanted to incorporate, I mean, excuse me, the, the third thing is we wanted to do is we wanted to make sure we had a place where it was adjacent to the building where we could rest our firefighters and also rehabilitate them. We also wanted that space to be used as a training space where we could cover the things that they did right and the things that they need to improve on. Uh, the team worked with us, they listened to our concerns, and collectively we came up with a design that in the end will be very functional and will help keep our firefighters safe. As part of phase two, we'd like to look at two additional buildings, which could be home to such things as the urban search and rescue uh, equipment, the candidate physical agility tests, an emergency operations center, or maybe even a 911 center. This is a great space where we can coordinate city efforts, and we know the only way that we can accomplish this and to grow the campus is to engage our local or regional partners, our local business and private industries, and other stakeholders. Now, the new Burn Building is one good example of how good governance works, and we hope this builds momentum for the future progress of the Training Academy campus. So thank you everybody that was, invo that, that was involved. Thank you Mayor Stephanie Rollins-Blake. Thank you to the Fire Academy staff, Paulie Meads and his team, Jessica. Uh, thanks to Steve Sharkey, Virginia Eckert, Laurie Ansley, and everybody else that had a part in making this happen. Well, thank you. So there's a lot of thanks that uh, we have for all those who are here. Uh, some we may have overlooked, but uh, we do want to make sure we, we give a special thanks to our, our local uh, unions, uh, President Campbell, President Hoffman, uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Bollock, and everyone else. But uh, the truth of the matter is that the Academy is a place where we train with the end goal to make sure whatever we do out there on the streets of Baltimore, that we're giving the citizens of Baltimore the best quality service that we possibly can. And this is one of the main avenues that we do that. But if it wasn't for the support of the mayor, Mayor Stephanie Rawlins-Blake, we wouldn't be here at this, at this crossroad to be able to uh, deliver good service to the citizens of Baltimore. She has a vision of uh, better, safer, stronger, communities and a growing Baltimore. And us as the fire department, we're doing everything that we can to support that. Her commitment is reflected in this project. And as we all see that she's taken her time out of her busy schedule to be here to support this. She came in our office uh, when we were closing five companies every day. And now we can proudly say that we don't do that anymore. Um, a, a great uh, accomplishment. Then, despite the uh, great financial strain caused by the uh, recession, we avoided layoffs. And if you look over to my left, possibly your right, uh, we have the privilege of having two brand new fire trucks uh, that was delivered to Baltimore. And uh, we, uh, we're excited about making sure that they go on the street uh, very soon. Other good news from the fire department under the direction of uh, Stephanie Ma Rawlins Blake is that we had two record breaking years. Uh, for us five fatalities and we look forward to continue to break records and we look forward to keeping the uh, five fatality numbers down low in Baltimore City. And as everybody else know that last week uh, thanks to uh, the mayor's good faith negotiations with the union leaders members agreed upon a new contract that's going to save the uh, city millions of dollars. So now with uh, all those positive notes, uh, without any further ado, it is my honor as the acting chief of the fire department to introduce our mayor, 
Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. I don't know about you, but I'm hot out here. And I have to, I have to assume that those of you that are in the full on, you know, fire officer regalia are even hotter. So I'm going to try my best to, to be quick. I want to thank Chief Siegel for his kind introduction and for your team's efforts to move this project forward. It's wonderful, as you mentioned, to see these new ladder trucks out here today. I say it uh, all the time when I've been talking about my 10-year financial plan is changing to grow. It is creating efficiencies so we can invest in equipment, state-of-the-art equipment. And I'm uh, looking forward to, I think, a few more weeks and this uh, these trucks will be on the road. These investments um, were made to modernize the fleet, including a dozen new ambulances as well, will make Baltimore a safer city. And I want to thank everyone uh, who worked hard to make that possible. And I know that uh, the chief and uh, the chief has introduced many people. I do want to acknowledge uh, our union uh, presidents, the fire officers president, Mike Campbell, firefighters, um, President Rick Hoffman, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And uh, I'm very proud as well of the agreement that we reached. And a great partner, and I see the Director of General Services here, Steve Sharkey, a great partner in this project has been the Director of the uh, Department of General Services. Uh, Steve Sharkey's team worked side by side with the Police Department to develop plans for the burn building uh, and the renovation of the entire Fire Academy. If you haven't had a chance to take a look at the master plan, please do. It is a beautiful facility that I think speaks to the greatness of our department, and I'm proud that we are moving toward uh, realization of that, that dream, that vision vision of the master plan. And I also want to acknowledge Laura Ansley and Mike Cook from DGS for their efforts. Can we give the whole team of D uh, Department of General Services a big hand? <laughs> now, where's Roy Kirby? Where's Roy? Is he here? Anybody from Kirby and Sons? You're not Roy Kirby. Oh, okay. Well, tell him thank you very much in his retirement for his generosity. I want to thank Jeff Turner, the superintendent of this project. Uh, his team deconstructed, as uh, Chief Siegel mentioned, the former burn building and is preparing to build this new facility. They're also cleaning the old bricks to be used for a planned 9-11 memorial that will be built at the academy. And I know that uh, over the years, we have collected some memorabilia and uh, some items that we would love to see displayed in that memorial. So I'm, I'm looking forward to the reuse of that, uh, those materials. And last but not least, I want to acknowledge and thank Calvin Butler from BG&E, BG&E Senior Vice President. We can give him a big hand of regulatory and external affairs. He's going to speak after me, and I want to thank your team uh, for being here. When Exelon and Constellation Energy merged, one of their commitments to Baltimore was to help fund construction of the new burn building. And they contributed $470,000 to this project. Excellent. Yeah, we can clap for that. Oops. Exelon's move is going to help grow the city on many, many levels. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. On many levels. The Harbor Point project will help create thousands of jobs. Uh, while breathing life into a long abandoned part of the city and their support of the burn building is a great example of good corporate citizenship that sets an example of how other companies' efforts can help support our growing city. Since 1955, firefighters were trained in live drills at the former burn building. They learned how to suppress a fire best by working together in a cohesive unit. This is absolutely vital, not only to contain fire and prevent loss of life, but also to keep everyone on the fire ground safe. Since 2007, our cadets have trained in Aberdeen, Maryland, far away from the city uh, that they trained to serve. This is costly and it's time consuming. It is an inefficient use of our resources and we knew we had to do better. But now with our new burn building, we will be able to uh, begin training a new generation of firefighters right here in Baltimore. And another part of this agreement allows Exelon and BGE employees to train here as well. This will help strengthen our relationship with BGE employees who are called to turn off gas and electric at fires in the city. This is crucial. 
Every time we have a fire, uh, they could be called to work together. Every time we have a critical um, emergency, whether it's a snow emergency, that I don't even like using those words, but you know, that the four letter word that I don't like to use, um, you know, if, if we were to have a blizzard or uh, a massive power outage, you know, they, BG&E and our fire department has to work closely together. So this uh, burn building will give us an opportunity to enhance our collaborative relationship. When the new building is complete, we'll conduct the first five live, uh, live fire drills since 2007 when the department experienced a great tragedy. A trainee named Rachel Wilson died while conducting a drill with her fellow cadets. It was a terrible day for the city and for the Baltimore City Fire Department. Since then, the fire department has made significant changes to our protocols and procedures to make trainees and our members safer. We've reduced on-the-job injuries and vehicle incidents. I have to thank, vehicle accidents. I have to thank you for that especially. Thank you for your safety on the road. Uh, you're saving, you're saving, um, you're being, you know, safe to, against physical injury and you're being fiscally responsible when you're driving safe. So I appreciate that. And we have policies in place to make training more effective and more efficient. Our goal is not only to be the best and the most professional fire department in the country, but also, also the safest for our trainees. Again, I want to thank you all for braving the heat, and I feel like we might have to go into active training once some of us spontaneously combust out here in this sun, but uh, thank you for coming out today. We're celebrating a great step forward in the department and for the first of many great changes at this Fire Academy, and now I want to introduce uh, the representative from Exelon who is making this possible. Uh, he could, Calvin Butler can talk about BGE and Exelon's ongoing commitment to our community. Please welcome Mr. Calvin Butler. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as introduced, Calvin Butler, Senior Vice President of BGE. Let me begin by saying uh, thank you to uh, Mayor Rawlings Blake. Uh, to Chief Siegel and to Chief Moore, and for all of you for being here. It's easy to partner with a city and share the vision when you have a mayor who clearly articulates what the vision is and to partner in economic development and growth. It's a natural for Exelon to come into the city to be a partner with you every step of the way, whether it's Harbor Point or this new burn facility. BGE, a member of the Exelon family, is pleased to support this project as part of our more than $1 billion package of merger-related benefits of job growth and economic development. Each person here today understands firsthand the importance of community fire and emergency response organizations, both volunteer and career responders. At BGE, there's nothing more important than the safety of our customers, and our employees. And you can be assured that we know firsthand the value add that you create. With that in mind, it's only natural that we enjoy such a close relationship with those of you here today. The safety of BGE's employees and customers is always, again, our top priority. So supporting a facility that will train first responders to work safely in emergency situations is a natural fit for us. And that's something that we are truly passionate about. As the mayor stated, often BGE and Baltimore City Fire Department personnel jointly respond to emergencies, such as those involving natural gas and sometimes electric emergencies as well. And having a facility where Baltimore City and BGE personnel can train side by side is a testament to the long relationship and partnership between the company, our company, and the city of Baltimore. Our investment will help make the city safer and improve the quality of life for BGE's customers and citizens of Baltimore. We do greatly value our relationship with the city, with the city firefighters and emergency responders, and are pleased to have the opportunity to continue to strengthen our collective ties as part of our parent company, Exeline Corporation's commitment to Maryland. In closing, this is truly a win-win for Baltimore City and the people at BGE. So thank you very much, and we look forward to partnering with you in the future.